A newly declassified briefing to the Trudeau cabinet has unearthed never before seen details of the inner workings of the government. The strategy to get the entire population on board was internally called Big Lift 2.0. The cabinet briefing notes that 7 to 9 percent of the population will not be swayed by mandates. They cited polling metrics but it's not quite clear how they calculated that number. That's right they know there's a hardcore that mandates simply will never work on. The briefing came from Transport Minister Omar al -Jabra and Treasury Board President Mona Fortier. The briefing states that there were three objectives to the mandates. To prevent transmission and infection among travelers and employees of the transportation sector. To improve vaccine uptake in the general public. And to play a leadership role in protecting the health of Canadians. And that second one right there, it looks like it worked because in the briefing, it says estimates suggest that mandates led to about 790,000 additional first doses in Canada as of October 31st, 2021. So quite plainly, it is to see the mandates were used to coerce the general public as a part of what they called Big Lift 2.0. We've heard talk about being up to date from Health Minister Duclos. Let's review. Oh want to ask ourselves whether we are up to date 40 percent of adults or would not be up to date as as of now as we can look forward to continuing the fight in the fall 90 percent of all the adults in canada have received two doses but only 60 percent of adult canadians have received a third dose putting us behind all other g7 countries except for the United States. From an internal slide from the Queen's Privy Council, marked secret and with still a lot of text redacted, we can read. Four options. Option number one, tighten the existing mandates to bring them to an up-to-date standard. Option two, temporarily suspend the existing public sector and transport mandates while transitioning to an up-to-date mandate for travelers at international borders. Option three, temporarily suspend the public sector and transport mandates, maintain the current mandate for travelers at the international border, and announce intention to transition to an up-to-date mandate in the fall if the health conditions warrant. And for option three, they note that this would help maintain confidence that government is guided by the latest science. Option four, status quo and focus on a voluntary campaign to stay up to date yourself. While the rest of the text is redacted, so who knows what egregious text lies underneath. It looks like we're in option three. They're talking about an up-to-date mandate in the fall if health conditions weren't, with the additional metaphor of being like a phone battery and needing to be recharged as often as every 90 days. Protection is like a phone battery. It needs to be recharged from time to time. The National Advisory Committee on Immunization, or NAZI, put out a statement. The National Advisory Committee on Immunization, also known as NACI, continues to recommend a booster this fall. To quote from the committee statement, however, a shorter interval of at least three months may be warranted in the context of heightened epidemiologic risk. A big thank you to Noé Chartier from the Epoch Times, who was a federal policy analyst for over 10 years before becoming a journalist. Noé has been tireless in his work and he's been pouring over thousands of pages of court documents. Check out the link in the description to his articles. The declassified information was revealed as part of the federal court case against the travel mandates. Didn't see any reason I should be running away. I'm not prepared to accept that kind of blatant discrimination against Canadians, including myself. So the option you have is to do something and fight. Connected by Roman Baber, Sean Rickard, who is now banned from Twitter and LinkedIn, met Carl Harrison and Sam Presvelos, and they launched a direct challenge to the government. The lack of real mainstream media coverage in Canada has left a lot of people in the dark about what these mandates were really about. That was a government tactic. Prevent people from getting all of the information. It leaves it leaves all Canadians on a slippery slope. A big thank you to Noe Chartier and Rupa Subramania for their journalistic integrity. It is so rare these days. The travel ban for those who chose not to take a specific medical procedure is suspended. But was it constitutional? Until that is answered by the courts, it could come back. In the notice on the government website posted on June 14th, it references possible reimposition of mandates at any time, including this idea of being up to date. The four court cases have been consolidated into one to challenge the constitutionality of the travel ban. 
The ban barred over 5 million Canadians from boarding a plane or a train between October 29th, 2021 and June 20th, 2022. But the Attorney General is trying to pass a mootness motion that would dismiss the court case as irrelevant because the travel ban has now been suspended. On August 5th, lawyer Keith Wilson representing the JCCF and the Honorable Brian Peckford, the only living drafter of the charter, had this to say. Dismissing this matter will set a dangerous precedent for government actors. It will allow them to be at liberty to enact, albeit temporarily, unlawful laws, and at their whim, revoke them and argue mootness when challenged. In other words, mandate unconstitutional rules, enforce them, and then suspend them, and when challenged, reply it's moot, because it's now suspended. The wheels of justice move slowly. If the consolidated court case challenging the constitutionality of the travel ban is made moot, then conceivably at any time we would be at the mercy of the reigning government in power, and they could do the same or similar again without challenge. We must have justice. Canadians have the right to know whether or not it was lawful for the government to violate mobility rights and infringe on personal medical autonomy, not to mention their blatant disregard for the Charter. Share this video around. It's important for everybody to know that this court case is happening, that these four court cases have been consolidated, and that people out there are fighting for your freedoms for our freedoms. For an 18-year-old healthy individual, the risk of getting hospitalized, hospitalized if we have no underlying medical illness uh, is very, very low. We know there is a risk, a very small risk, one in 5,000 that may get myocarditis, for example. H for honor, A for accountability, I for integrity, and L for loyalty. We are all like phone batteries. Hail brethren and hail freedom. My name is Rohan Kumar Paul. I live in Ottawa with my mother, wife, five children, and German Shepherd. I was chief technical officer for a tech startup in Ottawa until I was fired in February for covering and participating in the Freedom Convoy. I need your help, brethren, to keep the war campaign doing what it's doing. We started out fighting the culture war as we saw an art form we loved descending into degeneracy. Comics have always been about heroism, but not so much these days. We decided to bring that back. I'm happy to announce the Vestige graphic novel series will be available for purchase at the end of this week. Get on the WCFreedom.com mailing list and support us in our defense of the multi-pronged war on culture, politics, and basic human decency. It's a 360 degree win, brethren, as you get epic historical fantasy graphic novels that make a great Christmas gift for the young and old. And you keep us, the war campaign, fighting for freedom. Honor, accountability, integrity, and loyalty. Old virtues that need a comeback. Hail brethren and hail freedom!